the Rikishi Fatu Off the Top Podcast. Let's go. Rikishi Fatu, all y'all ready? We the ones. It's 2024. Keep it locked on the Rikishi Fatu Podcast. Off the top. We gon' talk about everything. Everything wrestling, everything hip-hop. Keep it locked. It's time to smarten up. It's on you. Go ahead. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, once again, thank you for returning to another episode of Off the Top with Rikishi Fatu. I am your co-host, TMD, and uh, Kishi, there's a lot going on. But before we uh, tap into that, let's uh, say hello to some sponsors out there. Well, I'd like to send a big shout out, as always, to Knox Pro Entertainment and Academy here in Los Angeles, California. Anything that you want to know about professional wrestling, you can stop by. Or if you would like to train, be trained by the pros, stop by. All you got to do is go to knoxpro.com. I want to thank them so much for always sponsoring the show here. What's happening, Joey? Oh, man, oh, oh man. Big yeah. quiche. Yeah. What, what's the real deal? What is really going on? The landscape of WrestleMania 40 has changed as we know it. Mm. CM Punk, he's out. Seth Rollins, he's out. And as I'm sure you might have heard by now, Cody Rhodes, he's no longer facing Roman Reigns for the title. It's The Rock. Well, hey, yeah, I, I think we tapped on this a while back before, you know, we even knew that The Rock was going to come. You called it. And, and you know, we I, I don't have no inside spoilers. Yes, because, you know, I do have the family that's in there, but we never talked about stuff like that, you know. And so, but, you know, through my whole, what is it, Twitter or my ex account, they like to call it, and all my social media, you know, I've seen the, you know, hashtag we want Cody, you know, and I was, uh, you know, I, I I was sitting there thinking from a a, a business standpoint, that I don't see nothing wrong with, you know, Rock coming to face Roman. And we talked about this. You know, at the end of the day, my, my take on this is about business, especially, you know, them, you know, Rock, you know, taking over into the TKO and that merge right there. So the numbers, they have to, you know, they have to pair up, right? And, and nothing, nothing against... Cody and, you know, coming, you know, who this kid is, well-deserved, well-deserved. But I, I want to say it was probably just bad timing, you know, because all this stuff here as, uh, you know, we, we I, I don't want to tap on what happened, to, you know, as far as with WWE and so forth. We all know that news is out there. So I want to keep it positive, right? You know, but, you know, it, it, I, feel, I feel bad for Cody. And hopefully... You know, he, this is professional wrestling, Joey. Uh, we can take that pen and that magic pen. We can, you know, you, you can write whatever, right? Card subject to change. Subject to change. And so, you know, I, I kind of see there's no reason why this thing here can't be, I don't know, maybe a three-way dance. You know, uh, obviously the belts won't probably switch there or maybe. But I kind of, you know, I mentioned last uh, last podcast that my take on it, you know, well, yes, Cody deserves, of course, we need to, you know, end this story here, you know, not only for himself but his, for his family, you know, his his Rhodes dynasty, you know, his father, his brother Dustin, you know, rightfully so, right? But everything is timing in here, and so. Who better? If you didn't listen to the last podcast, we well, I mentioned this before it even happened. Yes, sir. Right? Can you can you uh, remind? Me? Yeah, you. I I actually you asked me who was my pick between Roman and Cody, and I went with Roman, and you picked Cody, and you said, but what better way to finish the story? Cody beats Roman and goes on to face the Rock. So you called that before it even happened. And 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 when I saw it unfold, I was I was blown away. But I mean, of course, you can see that a mile away. I mean, you've been in the business for thirty plus years. I mean, of course, you you saw that. But I never saw that, and I thought you were going to go with Roman, but you went with Cody. 
That means you still got a lot to learn with me. Yes, TNT. sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, you sir. Know, at the same time, we're always, we're always, uh, you know, I'm always saying it's always training with me, right? Yes, sir. Always. And so, but yeah, you know, uh, it, it, I, I think everybody wins. You know, this thing here, the, you know, the business, the numbers, you know, will win for WWE TKO. You know, this is one of the dream matches that, you know, everybody's been waiting. I mean, come on. Everybody's been waiting for this, the Rock versus uh, Roman Reigns. So say Rock, you know, uh, you know, uh, say say Roman does do a job. All right, say he does do the job, and then you turn around. Who better? Who better to finish the story with Cody Rhodes would be the goat <laughs> of all entertainment. And the numbers will probably be bigger than WrestleMania 40. That's just my take, though. So as much as I want to keep it positive, and you know, and I will, but I mean, with all the negative news within the uh, last month, with, uh, with everything that happened, this news has taken the pro wrestling world by storm, and not so much in a positive way. There was a big negative fallout with The Rock inserting his his spot into the WrestleMania match. Mm. So a lot of people. Uh, went overboard. Uh, his daughter Ava had to uh, cancel her uh, Twitter account. Is that right? Yes, yes, sir. Uh, because of death threats, death Come threats, on. death threats over a, a, a wrestling match. But um, listen here, fans. Do do you guys, if you're listening, do do you realize this is entertainment, right? I mean, obviously, that the real wrestling fans out there, like, come on, you know, this is taken. This is someone's daughter. It's someone's niece, you know. Uh, I mean, you, you know, the wrestling fans that are out there, like, just you, you understand what this is. It's sports entertainment. That's exactly what it is. You know, this this is the Rock's daughter. This is a guy that the whole world loves, and just because he came in, did business. I'm assuming this is the reason why this changed, you know, for the better of the company. Because if these numbers don't turn around, hell, who knows? WWE might not be here tomorrow. Yes, sir. And so, in a way, you guys should be thanking The Rock for putting the numbers in there. Thanking Roman Reigns for paying that guy to help put the numbers in there and has been putting the numbers in there for the last three years. So for you guys to, you know, to, uh, uh, you know, death threat, my niece, somebody's daughter, you know, and, and, and come on, a, a young lady. And, and, you know, Big Keys, from being a fan in the 90s and watching when wrestlers got heat, you know, it was a little pre-internet, so not everybody had an opinion and, 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 a, and a stage to uh, broadcast that opinion. But it just, with this backlash, it got so nasty that it really seemed like just a whole different world. I mean, I mean, I mean, I know fans are passionate. And you know what? G granted, it's not all the wrestling fans because there's so many good wrestling fans out there. But for the ones who take it so serious like that, I mean, really, honestly, death threats and stuff, that's just going overboard. I think, I mean, anybody who, who invests that much in wrestling, you need to go out for a walk. Take in some fresh air, uh, uh, watch, mm -hmm. you know, a good mo comedy, play with your niece, walk your grandma across the street. Just smoke do some something. Weed. Yeah. Go smoke some weed or get some CBD or something. Man. Have you a shot of Jack. Yes. And gargle it. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's crazy to me, man. The, oh, the one guy. Man. I mean, when you talk about the one guy that everybody loves, I mean, hell, they were even talking about hopefully The Rock runs for president. <laughs> and out of nowhere... A big U-turn because cause you didn't get your way? Man. Come on now. It just feels like a whole, uh, just a, uh, a change. But you know what? My, my take on it, Big Quiche, is uh, I personally think, I think it's all part of the plan. But it got so bad that Cody had to tweet out, trust me. Triple H had to tweet out, we hear you. Which, to me, I'm thinking all that, you know, just from knowing and being around, I'm thinking like, I'm thinking this is all part of the plan. And we're all just, we're, people are getting worked, which is the beauty of pro wrestling. I didn't see that, uh, what what you just said, what Cody, I guess, tweeted out. But, hey, fans, I mean, there it is. He's saying, trust him. 
So I, I say right now, just let let the cards fall where they fall. Let's not spoil the this is the biggest event, entertainment event on the planet. So let's just see what these two giants can bring to the table. I feel like it ain't like Cody Rhodes is going up against a guy that's a nobody. He's going up with uh, Seth Rollins, right? Who's another fantastic worker, who's a great, great worker. And I think this guy here is so talented with the talent that Cody has. Dude, they, they should be able to knock it out the park, you know? And he's going to come out of this an even bigger star than he is now. Well, there it is. Then I, you can already see it. It can be Rock and Roman on one main event, one night, and then there's Cody and uh, Seth Rollins in the next main event. Yes, sir. So everybody wins. The numbers, you know, don't lie. It'll still be sold out. And everybody will go home happy, get their autographs, stop by, see me at WrestleCon. And it'll be happy. <laughs> yes, sir. You're going to be out there? Yeah, I'll be out there. I'll be at uh, WrestleCon on April 5th to April 7th. So you guys make sure you stop by. Uh, I uh, do this uh, thing with uh, been ambassador for autism kids. From really? Boston for autism for the last 15 years. And so every time that I do these big shows here uh, for WrestleCon, I'll, I'll, you know, come with uh, our crew from Boston Autism. It's... Uh, it's a husband and a wife uh, by the name of uh, Michael Weber out there in Houston, Texas, and uh, Tana Weber out there in Houston, Texas, and their daughter, uh, Zana. You know, I, I met her when she was, I think she was, uh, I don't know, seven, seven. Now she just graduated high school. Oh, wow. She's probably Uncle Kishi every time she sees me. So okay. it's a beautiful thing. You know, this is yes, the sir, thing yeah. that I talk about. You know, a lot of the wrestlers, you know, you... It's bigger than you. You utilize your platform to be able to come back and give and, and help those that, you know, that, that needs to be, uh, have awareness to uh, this type of, uh, you know, nonprofit organization. Yes, sir. So lend a hand. It's easy to be kind. There it is. You know? But speaking about, uh, you know, I got a lot of uh, uh, feedback you know, how about Jacob? I know one of your <laughs> your your good buddies, your road dog from back in the day. Yes, sir. Jacob Fatu. Fatu. Big shout out to the Samoan Werewolf. Yes, sir. Wow. Wow. Free agent, finally. Yes. And you know, um, you put that post out on your Facebook page, and that got spread around the wrestling world like wildfire. I logged into one website, and there they are talking about your post about how Jacob is a free agent and who's going to sign him next. Is it going to be WWE? Or is it going to be AEW? You, you know what? I, I, Jacob, for a while, you and I know this, and, you know, he's been out in the independent circuit for, I don't know, seven, eight years now. You know, and every time I see this kid, you know, he's out there, his, his hustle and his grind is relentless, you know, and he's such a humble, good kid, you know, very, very talented and so forth. And, you know, I'm looking at him from a, from an uncle's standpoint. Like, you know, his talent, he already conquered the independent circuit. The way I feel with Jacob, Jacob is the best independent wrestler that's out there, free agent. Finally, he got released, which I just talked to him yesterday, and uh, he has one more match against a Japanese legend, I believe it is. Forgive me, I don't know his name. But but anyhow, he's finally released. And I asked him, I said, Jay, you are finally released. He says, yes, uncle. I said, okay, don't sign another contract. It is time for you. Hear me out. You got seven kids. All, you know, for the last seven-something years, you've been grinding. I'm concerned about your body. You know, I don't want your body to break down before you get an opportunity to make some real money because you belong on the big stage. I don't know if anybody ever told you, but I'm telling you that. You belong to be able to dance with people like CM Pump, to be able to dance with guys like Randy Orton, to be able to dance with the mega superstars that are out there, Kenny Omega, I think you would have a hell of a match with Kenny Omega, you know? And so, you know, 
I told her, I said, you know, it's time for you to jump to the next level. And so, you know, you know, hopefully now, you know, he's uh, he looks good. He lost his belly. You know, I, I told him <laughs> eat, sleep, the gym. You know, Jake, he likes to eat. Yes. And, you know, coming from our, our bloodline, we all like mayo. Yeah, I, I, and on anything. You guys put yeah. it on, on beans, <laughs> on cereal, on beer. Well, you see, all right? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, how many times you see a, Jacob eat, and <laughs> Jacob would just, you can get the mayo, Joey. You can get the mayo. <laughs> I mean, you can be at a fast food restaurant. He's going to ask, I already got mayo on there. Yeah. But you'd ask for more mayo. It's <laughs> just some more steroids. Yes, sir. Right? But and, and so, you know, he said he cut down, and, and I mean, I just seen him, and he looks good. He looks. He just had a match with, uh, uh, what's that cat, bro? Uh, oh, Matt Riddle. Matt Riddle. Yes, yes, yes. Matt Riddle's first match out of WWE with Jacob Fatu. That says a lot right there. And But look, right? This is what I mean about how Jacob is ready and prepared. His training, there's nothing else that he can do to get even better than what he already is. He's never even met this guy, Riddle. Never wrestled this guy, real. But if you go on there and you check that match out on YouTube, it was like they just poetry in motion, right? The smarts in the ring, the give and take, you know? Jacob, you know, I'm watching Riddle get his shit in, and I was just like, okay, Jake, smart up. Before you know it, it's like he heard me talking to the, to the TV. And here he comes with, I mean, at a guy at, what, 245? I want to say 250 pounds? Six one, and can do the things that he does. You know the moon sop, the flips, the it's natural. You know, he, he's, a, he's a he's a mix to me of my two brothers, the speed and the agility of the Tonga kid, but the massive bulk and the strength of Umaga. And you know, uh, some inside information, I don't know if a lot of people know this out there, but there is a WWE game that Jacob did uh, stop, uh, he did the footage of Umaga. So he mm. plays Umaga in the WWE games. Uh, I, I don't know which game it is off the top of my head, but um, when you see the mannerisms, you know that. You can see that's Jacob portraying Umaga, but I thought that was so cool. Uh, stop caption, is that what they call it? Um, yeah, that's what he did. He, he did it out in the Bay Area. He filmed it in a hangar for WWE, and I was so happy to see him portraying Umaga in the game because I could, I could pull out his... his uh, Little uh, uh, little things he does when he walks to, uh, onto the apron, holds the rope. I could tell that was Jacob doing that. Um, mm. You know, before we go to commercial, Big Quiche, um, you know, there, there's so many stories. We, we And I believe we're going to have some when we come back. We are going to go to a quick commercial, and we will be right back with more Off the Top Rope with Rikishi Fatu. Rikishi Fatu, Off the Top. We're coming right back. All right, and we are back with more off the top with Rikishi yes, Fatu, sir, ladies yes, and gentlemen. Sir. We are here. So, speaking of your nephew Jacob Fatu, uh, I got to tell you uh, uh, something. Uh, Sin Bodhi told me a long time ago. Remember Sin Bodhi? Mm, big shout out to Sin Bodhi. Yes, sir. I love yes, that sir. guy. You know, he told me a long time ago about Jacob. Mm -hmm. He goes, "That guy's that kid is going to get signed because he doesn't uh, care. He doesn't try to be something he's not. He's just here. He's himself." Right. And 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 uh, he's having fun, and, right. and if you're ever around Jacob, you can't do nothing but help a smile. Well, that ain't nothing we we ain't never said before. You know, he just so happened to, you know, take time with Jacob, and uh, you know, realize who this kid is. You know, Jacob is just Jacob. He's not. He's not like he you don't know, look at himself like a superstar. He doesn't look at himself as if he's, you know, like better than everybody. You know, when you talk to Jacob, man, I mean, he'll give you the shirt off his back. You know, he'll probably charge you for it. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Double, too. Double, too. Uh, and, you know, speaking of, of him uh, thinking he's not better than people, I got to yeah. digress. I got to back up a little bit. There's a story about when he first started training at Knox Pro. Yeah. He comes in. And he sees the the crop of uh, people in the school. And I was in that room. Uh, he walks back in the office, has a, a conversation with Reno the Black Pearl. And something happens, blah, 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 blah. But he ends up telling Reno, I'm better than all 
those guys. And I'm just like, well, I was out there uh, in the ring too, Jacob. Damn. But uh, you, you, you know what, uh, man? Hey, that guy's just had banger and banger and banger after match with some of the biggest names in pro wrestling. I want to back up a little bit, Big Keish. Um, when did you uh, start noticing that Jacob had this natural ability to uh, uh, do what he does in the ring? Was that at an early age when he was a kid? Or when did you start seeing these uh, talents from well, him? Well, you know, um, Jacob wasn't supposed to be in the wrestling business. Um at a young age during his high school football years uh, in Pensacola, Florida. You know, he he, uh, he was a top star in uh, um, in Florida in one of the uh, high schools out there. And, you know, there I knew he had talent. And I thought, he, this kid here, there's no way that the NFL is not going to pick this kid up, you know, as long as he stays the course make sure he goes to school, have his grades. And, uh, of course, that didn't happen. You know, Jacob, you know, <laughs> Jacob just decided to, you know, smoke a Newport and <laughs> hang out and not go to class and, and just waste that talent there on the football field. And so, you know, years later, I haven't seen Jacob. Came back to California, and, uh, you know, this is when uh, me and his uncle Reno, on Hawaii, we, uh, we opened up Knox Pro. And this, I'm talking 17 years ago. And so out the blues, I was out of town, and uh, Reno had called me and said, hey, guess who uh, stopped by the by the domain? I said, who? Yeah, I'm thinking, oh, man, who, who, you know, mm-hmm. was it somebody coming to look at the students right, or right. Well, movie people, whoever, right? And he said it was Jacob. I was like, well, what the hell did he want? Because <laughs> I knew he was just nothing but trouble. Right. You know, he was... In and out of jail, you know, hanging around the wrong people and so forth. And, you know, we, we didn't want none of that type of cancer around the academy. And so when Reno came, I said, well, what do you want? He said, well, I came to open up the domain, and he was sitting right there at the front door. So I said, so what happened? And he says, what? Well, you know, I told him, get the f- out of here. Get out of here. So I said, Okay. And I talked to him, well, why'd you do that? Because I, I just want to make sure that, you know, we're not wasting our time with him. And, and so when he came uh, again, and, uh, you, know, you know, we let him have it, you know, his uncle first, and then I came through and said, listen, listen here, man, you know, you're at an age right now where you need to grow up. There's no life behind the bars. There's no life, you know, hanging out on the streets. You know, you got to change the circle who you're around with. Now, if you want to do this, what we're doing here is just, I'd say we don't want none of that bullshit around the academy. Everything that negative that you do, we don't want none of that coming through these doors. And in order for us to train you, you need to be all in. Not sometimes, all in. Don't waste our time and don't waste your time. And, uh, you know, after that day there, you know, Jacob started coming, you know. Of course, we had to get him some knee pads. <laughs> he borrowed his uncle's boots. And sure. Jay Bleed his blue shoes. Yeah. I still remember those big blue yeah. shoes. Right? Mm-hmm. He'd, he'd be, you know, and he had his ways of, it's the only kid I know is smoke a pack of Newports <laughs> and go out there in the ring and kill it and not, he's not blowed up. And so I was like, dude, yeah, you're not serious. I say, if you're going to do this, you need to cut everything. You know, you, you, and this, I think Jacob was probably, I don't know, 20, 22, maybe, or 21. Yeah, so he was a young, uh, he was young, very young. And uh, once we seen him, this is the time, though, he got lucky because he trained with us during the time when I was still active in the squared circle. And his uncle Reno was there. Oh, we had matches against you too, Joey. Yes, sir. Working against Jacob. Yes, sir. And, you know, we would all lead him in there because he was athletic, but we'd have to call the spots to lead him. And I'll tell you, man, he was the worst for me to work with in our whole family. And I'll tell you why. Because he'd be so amped up. (laughs) Number one, he's amped up and he's just soaking wet. 
his hair soaking wet from a bottle, <laughs> and it wets the whole freaking rings. And by the time I come through there, you know, I'm scared that I'm going to slip and twist my ankle. And so when you're calling a spot in the ring, it's that moment. You don't want to lose that moment from the fans and so forth, being, you know, when you get ready to go home. or And so we would always, you know, in the ring training with Jacob. I'd ask, Jacob, get over here. Jacob, Reno, tell Jacob, get over here. Reno, tell Jacob. He, you can hear Reno called, Jacob, Jacob, Jacob. <laughs> We'd be so blown up. By the time he gets it, you lost the moment. And so, you know, he was very, very, you know, lucky during the days. And, you know, right off the back, after I had that first match with him, I already knew that if this kid sticks with it, and and not you know you know not put himself in harm's way and just fully be committed that he's gonna be somebody in this business, and but we also had a B plan, and the B plan was this, because there were so many Samoans already in there, mm. right? And the B plan was this: we did our research, and out of the whole bloodline, there was never a bloodline that went to UFC. Now, you and I know Joey. Yes, yeah. Jake, Jacob is a humble cat. Yeah. But you also see, too, when that switch clicks on Jacob, oh, forget it, man. And I saw it in Texas. When uh, we were in Texas and there was going to be a big brawl, mm -hmm. and I saw him getting active, as the kids say, and a lot of happened, yada, yada, yada. But what, what the funny thing was he made me cry. <laughs> he, he made me cry that night because I love him so much. Yeah. And we went back to the hotel after this big brawl. This big brawl almost happened. I don't know if you remember it. We had to, it was like a movie. I don't know if you remember that big quiche. We had to gather everybody. Uh, Grandmaster Sexy was there. And we had to shuff everyone into the shuttles because there was about to be a, a, a riot. Where was this? This is in Dallas, Texas, big quiche. Oh, I had an autograph signing. We were at this bar, and, and the bar tab kind of got uh, went over, and, and, and they were looking for the money, and we were like, whoa. And then so Jacob got wind that people were trying to press you for money. And, no, I paid for it. I remember Jacob, that clearly. It was during WrestleMania yes, weekend. Yes, sir, yes, sir. <laughs> Territory league. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, Jacob ain't going to let nobody press you or yeah. any of that. So these people were trying to press you for money for the bar tab, and, and Jacob got active, right? And that was the first time I've ever heard the word bloodline because mm. it was Jacob. That's my bloodline. That's my bloodline. <laughs> but it wasn't that. It wasn't then he made me cry. It was when we went back to the hotel later that night, everything was squashed. We had this big meeting in the room. We're all chilling with these other wrestlers from Texas or from New Mexico, or from somewhere. We're all hanging out, and and somehow or another, the words got exchanged between Jacob and this other wrestler and me. I watched too many 80s movies mm. in the day. So I had a little bit of uh, whiskey in me. I don't know why I did this, Keish, but I jumped in front of, because the guy was going after Jacob, and I jumped in front of the guy, and I said this out loud. I said, <laughs> if you want a piece of him, you got to take me on. And the guy's <laughs> like, okay. Like, like you, I don't know why I said that. I don't know why I said that. So it's a big pull apart, and I'm, and, 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 uh, I'm trying to hold Jacob back, and I'm giving him the office, and he goes, man, quit squeezing my Hands. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think you can bleep that part out. I'm sorry. <laughs> and when, when he told me that, I was just so hurt because I was just trying to uh, dissolve the situation. So I went back in my hotel room and I cried like a little girl. He was trying, he was probably trying to hide from his Uncle Reno. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. He didn't want to get eaten. That was the exact time. You remember that? Well, it was a territory league and we were running up in Dallas. Yes, sir. And WrestleMania was there that Right time. across the way. Right across the way. I think I way. remember. Jacob, if you're listening, you still owe me money from that bar time. <laughs> yeah, you know, but hey, and, you know, all, all jokes aside, He's a good kid. You know, I hope he does uh, AEW and uh, or WWE. Uh, if you listening, you know, you, you might not want to pass up on this kid here. You know, he's a good kid. I'm verifying it. He's a hell of a worker. You put him up against money and he's going to draw you money. But you got to put him in the right storyline to be able to get the best out of this kid. You know, so you 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 give him that opportunity He's going to give you his heart out there because this is all he wanted to ever do was just to wrestle and take care of his family. You know, so make sure you guys follow the Samoan Werewolf on all his social media 
and you can tell him that your uncle sent you over there. Yes, sir. You know, his time is definitely now. Speaking of time, his time is now. Oh, yeah, most definitely, you know? He's in a, there's a video clip of him and Hulk Hogan together right now. He's at Hogan's shop, and they're posing together, and, and Jacob, of course, <laughs> is, like, yeah, introducing... Like you being a mark out there, Jacob. He's introducing all his boys to Hogan. He's like, hey, yo, Hogan, hey, yo, yo, Unc, this is uh, Jug Jug and Nook Nook and, and, and B-52 and, and, and AK. Like this a, is AK. Sound like a rap group. Yeah. <laughs> this is all at, at Hogan's shop. And not only that, you know, he's got Booker T out there who, who, who wants to do nothing but help him get signed. He's got you behind him. He's got everyone supporting him. And the reason why I believe his time is now is because he deserves it. He, exactly. he he took the negative that's happened in his life and he's turned it into a positive. He's kept on the the, the straight and narrow. And I'm proud of Jacob Fatu. And, 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 and nobody, in my opinion, deserves it more than him right now. Kishi Fatu, off the top. We're coming right back. So, you know, uh, we lost uh, Carl Weathers. Mm. Carl Weathers, a.k.a. Apollo Creed. Man, the Rocky. He he was a big part of the Rocky movie, yeah. Without without Apollo Rest Creed. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Uh, you know the, the Apollo Apollo Creed. Apollo Creed character would have would have anyone uh, that 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 role would have been available to anybody, but not anybody would have made that role what it was. So it's a huge loss not only for cinematography history, his family, his friends, but yeah. Man, I, you know, I, I, then he I, he was in a movie too with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Predator. Predator. That's Dylan. right. Dylan. Yeah, and they got the thing where they grab and they shake hands. Yes, I love I seen Predator. Old, uh, Sylvester Stallone on Instagram, man. You know, I seen one of his live uh, his videos. He put, you know, he, he yeah, that really tore his heart, man. That it's touching. Lost yeah. a good friend. I mean, hmm. Apollo Creed, man. Yeah, that, that's Rocky. There ain't no Rocky without Apollo Creed. You know, and uh, it, it, I, those are probably the only two movies that I remember him from as a young kid. You know, we all watch Rocky, right? But there was just that one villain, which, which Apollo Creed was the guy. Oh, you know, and then Terminator. Yeah, you know, Predator. Jack, I mean, yeah, you know, Predator. Predator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All jacked up, just holding them guns, a machine gun. <laughs> and then he lost his arms in the movie. He lost his <laughs> arm in the movie, and his arm still shooting the gun. <laughs> Bro, and he acted with the best. He acted with Sylvester Stallone and Rocky. Mm, Jesse Ventura. And Jesse the Body right. Ventura. He was in there. Yeah, absolutely. Arnold Schwarzenegger in Predator. And then he had his own starring role finally in Action Jackson, mm. which I don't know if you remember, but that was um, another movie he did. But it just, um, you know, ma major shout out to Carl Weathers. Uh, Rest in peace to his absolutely family. Huge, huge you know, fan. Sending love. But um, on a more positive note, I, I saw that O'Shea Jackson Jr. wrote in. Hey, big shout out to O'Shea oh, yeah. Jackson Jr. You know O'Shea, man, big shout out. He's, he loves the bloodline. Man. He's been a close family member, a uh, uh, friend of the fa family member. Every time when, you know, of course, they come to Los Angeles, you know, that's when we would see him. We would all meet at, at the catering. Of course. <laughs> of course. Of course. That's, that's where we going to meet, at the catering. Wherever there's man. Don't, don't forget to bring the man. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but he always, you know, he'll show up. Uh, I don't see his pops too much over there. Okay. But I know he comes over there with belts on and okay. everything. So he's been a big supporter of the man. So we got to get him on the show. Yeah, man. Big shout out. Thank you, man. I hope... hope uh, Oh, bud, we can link up soon, you know? And then, of course, in the music world, the Grammys just happened. And then Album yeah. of the Year, Taylor Swift. Are you a Swifty, Kishi? Ah, uh, Swifty. I, I probably... Uh, 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 you know, man, how? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know what a Swifty Swift is? It just sounds like a blunt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Swifty. I'm that Swifty. Oh, man. Yeah, so so Taylor Swift, uh, you know, she had a huge uh, I'm year. I'm Swifty right now, dude. I'm, I'm Swifty That's right, right man. I'm trying to get Swifty, too. Uh, she had a huge year, uh, album of the year. Of course, uh, Jay-Z, he called out the Grammys he, he, yeah. uh, because his wife, Beyonce, didn't win album of the year. How many more people are going to come to Can Can she ever defend herself? All these people speak up for Beyonce. She's the queen of, of, of uh, R&B, right, or the queen of uh, pop or right, whatever right, it is. Like you wouldn't stick up for your girl. 
I mean, well, my girls. I mean, my it, girls. It, it wasn't like she was called up stage. I mean, I mean, you know. You know, you know, he gonna get a little extra buddy. Oh yeah, buddy. <laughs> you know, <laughs> See, he he gonna get a little extra when he get home from Beyonce. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank and you, baby. I didn't even know it was her. That was a nice cowboy hat. Yeah, but I had no idea with that that blonde blonde white wig that she had on. But she just she looked so stoic as he was like um, creating this other moment. But you know, there's just so many people funking in the wrestling world, the hip hop world. Meg, Megan the Stallion and Nicki Minaj are yeah. at each other's throats. This is a rivalry, yeah, shake unlike with your any mama other. Gave you shake with your mama. Now we talking. Joe. And they look, they make Bret Hart and HBK look like best friends, like bosom buddies. <laughs> bosom buddies. You know. So why? What is it that they going against each other for? What? They, they, they're uh, somehow just uh, funkin', and it got so bad that the Beehive, you know, uh, Taylor Swift's got their Swifties, Nick Minaj's yeah. got the Beehive. I don't know how the hell I know this, but I do. Um, they they went after Megan Thee Stallion's mo uh, deceased mother and, and, and were uh, posting the location of, of the grave. So come the on. Fan, that's just, go, that's just going too now. far. Come on. Exactly. Yeah, just come on. But, but let, let, let's... Can we just leave the dead alone? Yes, can we... They ain't did a damn thing to you, and you just gonna go and rough the dead up right. for no reason. So if we could... Smoke a Swifty. Smoke a Swifty. Yes, please. If we could, Keish, if you had to pick who had the better derriere, <laughs> would it be Megan the Stallion or would it be Nicki Minaj? Oh, man. I'd have to go with man. That that's a that's a rough one. <laughs> that's a, they, 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 that evil laugh. <laughs> I'd, I'd have to go with Nicki Minaj. Oh. You know, pink. Mm. She's always in pink all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah. You know, pink. Yeah, look, look. I'm seeing your head. <laughs> Every time I say pink, you just yeah, nod yeah. your head. I, <laughs> yeah, pink. <laughs> just, uh, damn. Uh, we better hurry up and close this show up. Yeah, we, that's right, we've man. We've already turned this All to right. a rated off. <laughs> yes, sir. We'll catch you uh, guys, ladies and gentlemen, next, uh, next time on the Off the Top with Rikishi Fat 2. And remember this it's free to be kind to one another, and you know you better smarten up. You want to bring awareness to your business? All you got to do is hit the link below, and then guess what? Rikishi Fat 2 Off the Top Podcast will be promoting you. It's time to smarten up. It's time to say things that people are scared to say. It's time to bring you on into my home so you know what time it is. In the locker room, in the hip-hop world, in the wrestling world. You might even come into my kitchen.